And then I started thinking, how can I explain to you how I've done grammar? Because sometimes I feel like I'm the only one. Hi, welcome to my channel, Learning with Boys. I am a homeschool mom of four boys. I have graduated two. We just finished up our 15th year. This school year, I have a sixth grader and an 11th grader, so I have two more. And the other night, my high schooler came to me and said, hey mom, can you read over something I just typed out? So I went and looked at it and I was like, wow, started out pretty good. It was all really good and we just made a couple grammatical changes that actually the Microsoft Word suggested. But other than that, I was like, it's great. Now, what he was typing out and had to turn it in was for one of his online classes. And this online class was actually his dual credit class he's taking this school year. He is in 11th grade. Stepped away and then it just hit me. I started thinking, how did we get to this point? Because there was a time where when the boys were younger, you know, that thought, in the back of probably every homeschool parent's mind, let me know if you've had this thought, am I doing enough? Is this curriculum working? Is he getting it? Through this homeschool journey, every one of my boys have been different in the language arts area. From my oldest to my second to now my third, and I know to my fourth son, even though he's in sixth grade, that his personality, he's just, total opposite of all of them put together, if that's possible. But I found this quote and I actually posted it on my Instagram. I shared it because it was from Teach Them Diligently, but the quote is from Dr. Kathy Koch. I hope I'm saying that correctly. It says, we have to celebrate effort and not be afraid if our child has to try harder than a sibling or a cousin, and I have to add in a friend, or then we had to ourselves. We have to honor progress, not look for perfection. And I think that is something that I have learned. It's not something I knew right away. It's something that I've learned over the years. They have to stop and let them learn at their own speed. And that's gonna be different. So that is what I wanna talk about today in looking at language arts. So when we're talking about language arts, you could ask me, what curriculum do you use for grammar? And I could probably tell you what I would suggest. Or you could say, well, what writing program do you use? And I can also give you what we truly like. But the important thing is that just as I have just told you that all my boys were different, that even though I use the same curriculum, pretty much for all of them, there may have been a few changes here and there, that it was had to be used differently. I had to approach it differently with each one of them. So for our grammar, I mean, that could have started as early as third grade to as late as sixth grade. And that's what I sort of suggest. Now, for one of my boys, I started in third grade rigorously, but he did okay with that. Now, I can tell you right now that with a couple of my other boys, if I would have done that, they would have been lost. So I had to utilize that program in a different way for each one of them. So my expectations for them in that subject was going to look different. So teaching grammar, writing, communication, these are all concepts that, yes, should be taught early on, but they're gonna look different than they will in middle school and definitely high school. We're not gonna hand them the bowl of information. We're gonna slowly feed them bite by bite. Sometimes I feel like we take a grammar program and we need to rush through it so we can take the next test, so we can move on to the next unit and keep moving. And sometimes we feel that urge to keep up with so-and-so, like I said in the quote, with a brother or a cousin or a friend. That is where I wanna encourage you that sometimes it may not be the curriculum itself. It may be that they are just not ready. And let me tell you how I can still use the same curriculum. How am I gonna use the same curriculum and slow it down? Now, I will tell you that, for example, my son is doing a new science this school year from Science Shepherd. And the first two weeks I was like, this is a lot of review. And I'm questioning, 
this is a lot of review. I mean, I know what he's talking about and I completely understand it and I know all the terminology. And I'm listening, thinking, well, he's listening. He's getting it. It's so much review that, and the review is good because it is preparing you for the mindset of the science itself and how it relates to God. But by the time he's done with this two weeks, he's going to comprehend it enough to share it with somebody else. And that just struck me all of a sudden, like, okay, this is what he's doing. And this is gonna help him in his next step of science. He's gonna be able to talk about it and understand it with a little bit more confidence. So I'm really liking it. And then I started thinking, how can I explain to you how I've done grammar? Because sometimes I feel like I'm the only one. But I know there's other moms out there that do it the same way. And if you do, let me know. Let us all know just so we can be an encouragement to each other. With my first one, I was rigorous. Um, his third grade year, we did what I used for curriculum at least one year for all of my boys, and that was Shirley English. But my second one was not ready to do that rigorously. <laughs> um, we had to slow it down and actually go start with a younger book. And I really didn't start with him until probably fourth or fifth grade. So there we are with each child understanding it at different levels. Now, with my youngest right now, what I am doing is I am just taking my time. Instead of trying to do a whole lesson, I'm just taking the concepts and using the sentences they have to explain it to him and doing a few sentences a day. Now, I probably started that more in fourth or fifth grade. He's definitely progressed a lot more than from when he started, probably really with concept of grammar in fourth grade. But at that time, it was just doing a few sentences a day with the subject noun. The first, I mean, there's no point in trying to teach them a whole sentence. We just need to start from the very basics. and. Instead of rushing through the curriculum, I may not even finish the curriculum. He's probably reviewed subjects and nouns so many times that he can explain it to somebody else. And I think with grammar, if they can get to that point, that is when they've got it. So even if you feel like you're reviewing, you can do it in different ways. You can do it in fun ways. You can make cards for different words and tell them, put a subject here and put a verb here, like little note cards, or you can do it on a whiteboard, which we use a whiteboard a lot. I even actually have a whole video on how we use a whiteboard. You can do it that way. It does not have to be them using a workbook the whole time, even though you're pulling the information from the workbook. So I just wanna encourage you with that. Now these are very baby steps. And at the beginning of the video, I'm talking about my son sending in something he wrote for a dual credit college course. That's what I want to talk about is how do you get from what I'm talking about in the baby steps of a subject verb all the way up to the writing. And it is, that's what it is, it's baby steps. And lots of review to the point where they can explain it back to you. I think once they get the grammar, the writing is just gonna come so naturally to them. Once they understand subject, verb, nouns, and what the nouns are being used as, and then again, I mean, you could spend several weeks on just a subject, noun, and an adverb adding in a and the as your article adjectives. So just the review, the review, the review. It's like math flashcards. And you could even do that. I actually have cards and I have reviewed the question answer flow um, with my boys. All of my boys, I've done that to help them understand what that word means and why, what you're looking for and what it's gonna modify. So then you get down to the phrases and the clauses and how all that comes together. And that is where my 11th grader is now. He's actually using the IEW Fix It. He is using book six, I think. <laughs> and it's actually going pretty good. I mean, I still sit down with him. He'll still have some questions. He fills it out to the best of his ability, then we'll talk about it. I'll ask some questions. I don't show him the answers right away. We'll discuss, well, do you think that should be there or what, you know, if he's got the verb wrong? Because these are big, huge sentences. And some of them have several verbs in them, but it's not the main clause. So it is a whole nother level. But how did he get there? Just by review, review, review. And it could be the same review for weeks. You may not finish an actual 
grammar book in a year, and that is okay. Now, the curriculums that I have used are Winston Grammar, and I have a video on that, and Shirley English, and I have a video on that. Now, we have used Fix It, and I've tried that off and on throughout the years. Of course, it has been updated, so it is a little bit different, but I, I think I like it. And my son actually used the older version in ninth grade, and I think he likes the newer version. I feel like he's almost doing better. So I can't tell you where to start. Um, I feel like they might have a test on where they could. If not, they have samples. Like I really had to think about what they were teaching. They have a list of what is in that book, what they're gonna be learning. So I wanted him to be familiar with some of it and then learning the new concepts. So that's sort of the book that I chose that I thought he would do well with because right now he should be taking dual credit next year for English. So I want him prepped and ready for that. Now for writing, yes, we have used IEW, but I think it doesn't matter what writing program. I know there's parents out there. I'm not naturally a writer. I would rather probably teach math than try to teach someone how to write. Now over the years, I have enjoyed it more. I have learned to love words and enjoy and see good writing. <laughs> um, and it amazes me, but I don't think I will ever have that strong ability. So forgive me if you see me write things on Instagram or share things with you. I am more of a number person and I think my oldest is that way. I want to calculate and analyze and figure out things that way. But not being a writer, Shirley English has helped all my boys and again, it wasn't like I handed, we started from the beginning of a curriculum and finished it at the end of the year. I never felt that pressure. And I feel like there's a lot of pressure out there for parents to do that. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you need to start with A and finish it by the end of the school year. I think I want them to understand the concepts so well that they have it down to explain it to someone someone else. And I feel like my 11th grader is that way. Now he is doing level C and he started that last school year, but I split it into two years and it is actually going slower than I expected this school year. But I think it's because he's doing a lot of writing for the dual credit classes he's taking, which is great. I mean, that's what I wanted him prepared for. But I will tell you with IEW, and this has been years ago, my oldest was probably in fifth and sixth grade when I introduced level A and we didn't even finish it. It was more that we just all sat down, we sort of worked on it here and there just to start the process, just to start the process. And he had the opportunity to take some and that's what I was looking at. New teacher, new mom. This program was new to me. I did watch the teacher videos, which I do highly recommend. I feel like if this is something that you have a heart's desire is to, to have your kids have the ability with grammar and with writing is to learn yourself, even if it's along with them, which has been my story. It's been learning with them. And of course, your first child, my first child, and I've apologized to him. He was my guinea pig, but that's OK. He's doing great. But. So he had some co-op opportunities and then my next one was even slower in the writing process and the grammar process. And I don't know for sure if it ever perfectly clicked with him, but when he shows me some writing he did, I'm shocked. Like, <laughs> so praise the Lord. And that is another thing. There is no way that I could have done any of this without prayer. And, you know, I, I when I was thinking that thought, how did we get to this point? Lord, you have been so gracious. Like, I've just done what I could. And he's taken it. And he's carried it further. And so I'm very grateful for that. So I just want to encourage you. Just do what you can. Now, I'm not, I do want to be clear about, I'm not saying just give him the book and hope it goes well. That No, I, I don't want you to take that this way. I truly believe that you need to spend time with them, even if it's baby steps, even if you feel like, okay, we've been doing this for three weeks, I really need to introduce a new concept, which happens, but just keep moving forward. Keep moving forward, have some goals, set some goals, and keep moving forward with them. Now, with the IEW writing, this son, 
he had a little bit before C. I'm trying to remember if he did any of the videos. I feel like he may have done a little bit in middle school. And then he did a themed book in ninth grade, which again, he didn't finish. We just worked through it the best that he could in the time. But he had some other writing projects for history. And I wanted him to learn the concepts to be able to use them in different subjects. And that's the important thing. So now I have my sixth grader. He's already in sixth and he is just starting a themed book and it's actually part of our curriculum that we're using this year, Heart of Dakota, but he's doing the medieval book from IEW and it's going slowly. And I think it's stretching him a little bit, but we're gonna keep moving forward because there's parts of it he likes and parts of it he's not too sure about yet. <laughs> so I just wanted to share our story and how things got to where they're at because that's really how I felt the other night. And I was grateful, I was thankful. I feel like we definitely have some more work to do, but I think because of the ideas and the progress that he's had over the years that that is gonna help him. I do really like IW writing and I really feel like Shirley helped him because actually a couple years ago, I was trying to think what can I do to help my, I don't know if he was in third or fourth grade, understand some grammar and my 11th grader he's like why don't you use Shirley I really that helped me and I was just like yeah it did and I used it with all the boys I don't even know why I was questioning myself so it's funny because then we use that for like a year and a half because I used it at the end of third grade like I didn't brush it and then I used it in um no, I think I used Winston in fourth grade and then went back to Shirley last year. So I will share some of the videos that I've done in those curriculums below. If you are using a curriculum that you already love and you know that you can teach it, but they're struggling, maybe just slow it down and take your, take your time with it and don't feel like you've got to finish it all in one year. So I hope this video is helpful and encouraging. I know grammar and writing can be one of those subjects that maybe some parents feel confident in, but it's hard to teach. Or you could be like me and I'm not confident in it or want to teach it. But I feel like I have learned a lot through the years along with them that we almost can help each other now. So, all right, I hope you all have a wonderful week and I do appreciate you watching. If this video is helpful in any way, I would love for you to hit the like button. And if you'd like to see future homeschool videos, I also do videos on food and a few other home family things. So subscribe, that would encourage me. And I hope you all have a wonderful week.